right. So you want me to zoom out? No. Nope. Okay. Mm. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Beyond the Current Situation. I believe this is my seventh episode, and my guest today is not only a very special person, but he's also a very special friend of mine, very dear friend of mine. And uh, Vincent Pastore is widely known for uh, his work as Big Pussy in The Sopranos and his Broadway role in Bullets Over Broadway. Uh, and uh, But his career did not um, end there. He continuously impresses me personally with his tenacity and his drive to just continue working and growing uh, himself and, and, and staying in the business no matter what. Uh, so without further ado, uh, welcome, Vinny. It's great to have you here today. Hi, hey, Lily. I haven't seen you in such a long time. Uh, I guess this is the way everybody's communicating. You know, on Thanksgiving, um, this was how I was communicating with my entire family. It actually, it was my idea. Yeah. Uh, my sister kept saying, um, come over to eat. And I said, you can't. So yeah. we set up Zoom and we were Zooming in family from Utah. I didn't even know I had family in Utah. This guy looked like Jeremiah Johnson. And then somebody from Dublin. So it turned out to be pretty cool. So oh, this whole uh, Zoom is is the, the now, it's the present, it's the future. You know, I have a podcast. I, I'm, I'm on Zoom almost every night. You yes, know? yes. I want to hear all about that. In yeah. fact, before we do that, um, Vin, one of the reasons uh, why I launched this podcast, Beyond the Current Situation, uh, was was really to give my followers and my listeners and just people you know around the globe some insight on how to navigate through any life situation, not just COVID, right? Because anything can happen at any time, right? Yeah. And, and and without really losing themselves, you know, without losing their shit, to be honest. Yeah, with you. And, I know. And, and and succeed no matter what, right? And and so you know, it it really reminds me of of you, um, so. Before we get to what's going on right now, take take us back a little bit in time. Uh, you were raised in New Rochelle. Yes. Uh, tell us about that. What what was what was growing up like for you in New Rochelle? Well, it was it was it was it was hard uh, because uh, my father didn't make a lot of money, um, and. Um, it was tough. My mother had to work, you know, uh, she worked at, actually, I was by there today. My mother used to work at the college in Rochelle, and I went by there today because they were filming a, a, a TV show, an episode of a CBS show on the, on the, you know, on the, on the campus. And my mother worked at the college in Rochelle, and it was hard, you know, because um, we were going around. We never, we never stayed in the same place for more than a couple of years. Wow. You know? And, uh, but it was all in the same neighborhood. It was uh, in a neighborhood called the Western Rochelle. It was all Italian. And then I went to high school, uh, at Nurshall High School, and uh, there was a thing with the, with the Jewish girls and the Italian guys, and we used to date. It was, it was crazy. And we would go up to an area called the North End. Actually, it was where um, Tommy Matola grew up there. And oh really? Parties up at the North End, and and meet lovely uh, uh, Jewish girls, and we would date these girls, and that's what it was kind. Of, it was pretty cool. And yeah. I, I dated a girl. Uh, her name was Nyberg. I thought she was Jewish, but she was Swedish. But it didn't matter because her mother and father wouldn't let me see her anyway. <laughs> they, didn't want, they didn't want the girls, the kids, uh, to go out with the Italians. Mm. Mm. You know? Well, we've come a long way now, haven't we? In, in, in yeah, school. we've come a long way. We've come a long way with yeah. uh, everything that's, that's been going that's, on. And... That's the least of anybody's problem, not dating a, an Italian guy. A abs absolutely. And um, I'm speaking of uh, coming a long way. 
Um, I believe it was 1987 or somewhere around that there. I remember it was like the weekend of my birthday and I was cast in this film and we were filming it off of um, South Street Seaport in a ship and you and I oh, were actually to together. You? Yes. It was, it was 1990 or 91. Okay. And we were together on that ship. You were one of the guys in the gold jacket and I was the the hat check girl i know you you showed me that picture and then i remembered who you were isn't that so funny and and yeah. here we are it, what i love is that you know all these years have gone by between your career my career what we're doing and where we've moved and traveled and toured and here we are we've come full circle and uh, you know and then we meet uh, uh, a couple of years back in uh i think you were playing I had just launched my book, Truth to Triumph, and I, I think you were Trump. playing it. Was that the um, um, that was the Gangster Squad at yeah, Shot well, it, it was a combination of a, a bunch of musicians, and we were playing at Shot Chas. It got reopened again. Karen uh, redid it. Oh, amazing! Oh, well, well, you, yes, that's where we met, right? But, and of course, there. you've been so near and dear to me for the whole time. And Karen oh, as well. A very special person in my life. Thank you. You are too. I, I think, I, you know, I think, um, you know, I didn't know at the time that you performed, is, you know, in a band. Um, so tell me a little bit about, I think it's Gangster Squad, because I saw you yeah. there, right? I went, yeah. I went with you to a couple of uh, events. Right. Right. Well, um, that uh, became an extension from my club days because I ran rock and roll bars up in New Rochelle. Oh, really? Oh, that's yeah. right. I think you told me that. Yeah. And uh, I, first I was running discos and then I went into the rock and roll. Uh, uh, I had a rock and roll place. It was uh, about a capacity of 150 people, tops, stage, DJ booth. And um, and I've been bringing musicians up. And these guys that played back then, are my guys now, with the exception of Killer and Tommy right, Killer. Those are yeah. newcomers. But the guys, the backup band, Eddie and the Baron on sax and Benny Harrison and Pisani and Charlie, all these guys, Al Orlo, they all played at one time in my club. Wow. And they're part of my life still. I, I love it. It's, Isn't that it's great? It is great. It's funny how, you know, we make these connections and these friendships. Uh, at first, you kind of think you're just colleagues and you just, you know, you're like family. Yeah. Right? yeah. Uh, we've been doing the Wonder Bar, which has been kind of tough. Yeah. In Jersey with the social distancing. I mean, the normal capacity at the Wonder Bar is 200 people. And, and, and Debbie has been bringing in 50 people. And it's a fundraiser. Um, and she charges, you know, a certain amount of money. But she sells out in like a day. Our next show is Christmas. So we've been going down there. And, you know, my daughter Renee said, Daddy, what are you doing? I said, well, I got to live my life. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> you got, you know, you got to keep on There's going. I mean, a while. yeah. And, and you know, it, it's so interesting. Another reason why I'm kind of so excited to really have you on as well is because, you know, there it's not just COVID, things just happen suddenly, you know, and, and just, you know, just come down on our lives and all of a sudden it's like, okay, you know, like, like the Sopranos, right? Yeah. You know, huge hit around the globe. Really was happen. I mean, huge hit around the globe. Then, you know, the you star know, of the show, was, James. I was uh, talking to Roger today who brought us to Australia. Mm -hmm. uh, me, Michael Imperioli, and Steve Sharippa. Mm -hmm. I remember last year. Right. Yeah, I was hanging with you. And, mm -hmm. uh, and we have other gigs coming up. And we were supposed to go to Great Britain, 15 city tour. All well, that got canceled. Yeah. And Roger called me today and he said, Vinny, as soon as the country opens up again, these people have commitments to us. Mm -hmm. So we're mm -hmm. still going to go do these shows when everything opens up. So we didn't lose anything it kind of got postponed yeah yeah and 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 what what did get totally postponed or should i say stops you know right dead in your tracks was you know the the loss of um the tragic you know uh death of james galdolfini and now 
suddenly he dies. And, you know, how did you, and yeah, I know you can't speak die? for the cast, but, but, yeah. but how did you overcome that? Or as a cat, like, how did you all overcome that death? Well, it was, it was, uh, it was a tough time and it's still a tough time for all of us because, um, you know, he was, he was our leader. You know, there was no show without Jimmy. I mean, uh, we had Lorraine, Baraka, we had Edie, we had a great supporting cast. But uh, Jimmy, just like on the show, he he was he was the guy. He wasn't that guy. He wasn't that wise guy. He's a gentle, loving, big teddy bear uh, mm -hmm. in real life. But he loved his friends. He loved his fellow cast members. He took care of Robert Eiler and, and Jamie as if he was their real father. Mm. He uh, took care of all of us. Uh, financially, he took care of us. He always worried about us, about if we were going to get a raise. And, mm -hmm. and he took care of us, in a sense, as an actor, if you and I, because you're an actress, if I'm doing a scene with you and we're about to shoot this, let's say we're doing a scene from uh, Blue Bloods tonight. Mm -hmm. And I would say, come on, Lily, let's go run lines. A lot of people don't do that. Really? They don't say, come on, let's go run lines. I mean, they're stars and they just, they yeah. come out when it's time to shoot their scene. Yeah. And they're in their trailer running their lines with their assistant or something, but not with the person they're working with. But Jimmy would say, come in the trailer, let's work on the scene. And wow. On the scene, and then you'd go out and shoot it. And we, we gave David one, two takes, and then we'd move on. And Jimmy would look at me and say, so, uh, Vinny, you happy with that? You want to do another one? And that's the way he was with me. Wow. He, he was a very giving actor then, because, yeah. you know, that's a very he wasn't giving actor. At all. He didn't have an ego. He cared about his friends, about the show. Uh, there's a story I tell, um, I tell everybody when we're on the road with our, uh, we call uh, Conversations with the Sopranos, mm -hmm. Michael and Sharippa. Mm -hmm. said, um, yes. So the day the Emmys came out of that season that I was in, the season where I, you know, that second season that which is really written for me and for David Paval, uh, when the Emmys came out, Jimmy called me seven thirty in the morning and he said, "Vinny, you got robbed because I didn't get nominated." And I said, "Yeah, I don't think I'm ever going to have this opportunity ever again." And it's hard. I talk to Michael about this all the time, Michael Imperioli. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to get back and to find something as close as that. Yeah, I know. I mean, I imagine that event, I'm calling his death a life event, forced um, you know a lot of cast members to make some serious career pivots. And, re and, and, and did you... Did, didn't you have to reinvent, if you will, reinvent yourself after your role, you know, as Big Pussy? Well, you know, I'm still doing that. I mean, um, see, um, you know, I was, uh, I had Chaz on my podcast, Chaz Palmentary, and, and he said, you're one of the luckiest actors out there. You did this show for what, one? I said, two years. He says, and you're famous 20 years later from that role. And I said, well, it was an iconic role, but it helped me and hurt me. And it helped me because you know me from that. Everybody knows me from that, but it hurts you where, did I get a part in The Irishman? No. Why? Because I was told that Marty saw me as Big Pussy. Yeah. It's that, that you know, that typecasting is definitely is very, right. very real. And, right. you know, um, yeah. And if you're so close to a character, it's hard to get another TV show or um, movies aren't bad mm -hmm. because they say, okay, like this thing that I'm supposed to do in LA, it's a wise guy role. When I work on my stage work with Maureen and Steven Van Zandt, we try to do roles that are not going to be given to us by Hollywood. But yeah, you get stuck into this and then all of a sudden, boom, I'm out of a job, man. Right. And they all were moving on. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I was out of a job. Yeah. So it was kind of devastating, but I got lucky and uh, I started to do some films and and I endured, I guess, you know. I did, yeah. Um, but did you keep hurricane. working at it. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. You, well, I'm a working actor. Yeah, you, everybody you, knows me. 
Lily for Sopranos, but hey, I sometimes I get up, I get up in the morning, I put on a cable, and there's a movie popping around that I did maybe 20 years ago, and I had black hair. <laughs> you know? And I'm sure you that happens to you too. You see, yes. you know, it's true. The other day I was watching uh, a movie that we did with Michael Caine. Uh, you probably were an extra in it also. Could be. And he we was like running through the train station, Grand Central. And I said, there's my scene. And I purposely stayed in back of Michael because I knew the camera was on Michael. Mm -hmm. And I slowed down my pace. And I'm in like maybe a minute. Yeah. But that's what I used to do. I mean, when we did it, it could happen to you. We got contracts. Yes, we were extras. We we had it was like a it was like a bit part, like you got you know a silent bit. It was called a silent bit, right? <laughs> well, no. What happened with me is that um, Andrew um, uh, Bergman, yeah, the director, was a friend of Cha Cha's. Oh, was he? He yes. was a very nice man. He Andrew, was a nice guy. Andrew did that movie with Brando. Uh, where he played the Godfather again? Oh, yeah, Remember yeah. with um, yes. uh, Matthew Broderick? Yes. What was it called? I forgot, but I know what I know what movie you're yes, talking about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he did that movie with Bruno Kirby. Okay. Uh, um, Cha Cha helped Andrew out a lot. They were friends. I'm on the set of It Could Happen to You, and um, we had gone the wardrobe and everything to wear these yellow jackets. So the scene is that we go up on stage and we're collecting a our checks and I start improvising mm -hmm. and they shot a take and then um, Henry came over to me, Henry Bernstein who turned out, who became an executive producer on The Sopranos, he was the, he was the first AD, he says if you guys don't shut up, I'm sending you guys home mm. I said, oh alright you're not supposed to talk, you're extras I said, alright so we do another take and we all clammed up and then Andrew mm -hmm. came over to me. He says, hey, really, what was all that beautiful dialogue we had before? You know, come on. I said, well, he told me not to talk. Oh. And Henry said to him, well, if you upgrade Rennie, you got to upgrade all the other bowlers. And right. Oh, that's right. You were the bowlers in the gold jackets. He said, do it. So then when we did the scene with you on the boat, we were allowed to talk and we were making up our own lines. I love it. I love it. It's, I, I love it. That's great. I, yeah. I had, um, well, they don't do that anymore. No, they, I, I guess not. You know, it, for me, I, I was, I was the hat check girl, but coat check girl, hat check girl, whatever. And so they had me in the scene with Nick, Nicholas and, um, Rosie Perez when they came see, on the boat. I see now because now I look for you. No, because no, what they, we did the take a few times and Andrew. Yeah. He said something or other to the first AD or whatever it was. And they had to take Rosie. They put Rosie on a box because she's really short. I'm short. Sure. She's even shorter. Then they took her out of the scene altogether. Yeah. And you know who was And it was just Nicholas and I. I don't know why they did that. Seymour Cassell. Okay. He was in that scene with you. He was the rich guy. On the boat with the oh wife. Seymour and Seymour works he, a lot. Yeah. Well, Love he, him. He, yeah, I know. He recently died. He passed away a couple of years. Oh, ago. did he? Yeah, he was good friends with. See, it's funny we're talking like this. He was really close with Jimmy Gandolfini. Mm. When Jimmy was in L.A., they would always always uh, found drinking in this place in Santa Monica. It's a famous restaurant where Sinatra used to hang out in. Mm -hmm. And they were always hanging out there. Seymour and Sean Penn and Chris Penn and Jimmy. And um, yeah, Seymour was in there. Yeah. He went to wow. the Casavetti School of Acting. Interesting. Seymour you know, himself. yeah. It, it, it's funny we're talking, and of course we're on Zoom because of the pandemic, right? Um, but, but, you know, we're, let's go back like a couple of months. We're in the midst of, or, or several months. We're in like the height of the pandemic and, you know, m most of us are all in lockdown. You know, I was in Manhattan in lockdown and I think you were up in, in, in city Island, right? Yeah, right here. And, yeah. Yeah. And, and, and you're bottling your own Italian sauce and I, I love it by the way. Yeah, but they make it right down the corner from you. <laughs> I, I know. I love this. So what was the motivation like uh, to, to launch your own product? The motivation 
Lily, is as you get older, you realize you need some commodities. You need some uh, uh, merchandise that's got a hard sell commodity, like t-shirts, like hats, uh, sauce, pasta, uh, all that stuff. Because it's a commodity, especially with the pandemic, people buy. Yeah, you know, Vinny, I love that. We ran out of the sauce during the pandemic and we just ran out again because people are buying it. And they're not buying it because, um, well, they're buying it because it's popular. It, you know, it, it's got my picture on it and I signed the labels. It's good, but they're buying it because everybody's home cooking. Yeah, yeah. And you know, it, 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 it's true. You know, um, I've been going crazy trying to find a place to, to get um, killing dried firewood. I said, why is it so hard to get? They're like, everyone's home. <laughs> but, but you know, it's back to the sauce, though. Um, I really love that, Vinny. And, I, and I'm glad that, you know, that was your motivation. I'd like to kind of bring that, um, that reason, that attention to our listeners, because as a coach, you know, that I, I, I also, I life coach, um, I always talk about creating something that can be a passive income product, passive yeah. income, you, yeah. you know, even my book, you know, it's like, a, right. you know, it's not, I'm not going out and handing out and, and selling physically. I could wake up and there's sales. You could wake right. up and there's sales. Passive and they go, income. And every, it's on, online now. I mean, we sell a lot of the sauce online. We I love went it. down to Karen's cheese store. It's called Oliva. You've been there. Of course I've been there many times. And we went in and Karen set up a big display for me and she put me behind this plastic. We were there all day. It was Columbus Day. We had so much fun. She sold 40 cases of sauce. Oh, she's and amazing. I was signing them, right? Oh, yeah. It was great. I, I mean, that's what I like. That's what I like to do because I get out and you meet your people, you meet your friends, mm -hmm. you get out. I mean, you can't, how long can you stay in? You got to get out, you know, like. Yeah, it's really, it's been a very, it's been like a super challenge for, for everyone, you know. I go fishing near you. I know. I, know. I go fishing near you and you gotta... I don't catch anything, but I get out, I get out for the day. You got to come. We got to make some sauce. <laughs> uh, I'm going to come visit you. I promise. Yes. yes. You know, I'm going to come visit you. I yeah. have a problem with my eyes driving. So I got to come during the day. Yeah. During the day. And, yeah. You know, come yeah. back. Um, mm -hmm. You know, unless I have, you know, my friends drive me and I got good right. friends. I don't, you know. Yeah. Yeah. No, I know. My friends, I told them I was doing your show tonight and they said to say hello. They all love you. Oh, I love them too. They're so Bobby great. I... And all these guys, they all love you. And they, you know, they said, where's Lily? I said, <laughs> out of the city. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Smart. I just on time. I, you know what? I was following signs from the universe. I, I was planning to buy this, this, this house before the pandemic and boom, you know, right on time. You know, uh, and then that's what actually that was uh, around the time. That's when I had uh, launched my podcast and I planned to do that before the pandemic as well. So it was just easier because, you know, now we're home. We're all home. <laughs> yeah. And um, in fact, I speaking of podcasts, I saw that you uh, I just saw you teamed up with um, with your pal uh, yeah. and, uh, on your own podcast. Yeah. Uh, and I and I you shared it with me the other day. I just got to see uh, the replay this morning. It was, it was really fun. And it's called forget about it. So, so tell us about no, that. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, you got to say a little better than that. Come on. Well, you got to show me. How do I do it? Well, you got to think about um, Mickey Blue Eyes, uh, Hugh Grant. Remember how he was trying to say it? Mm -hmm. Jimmy Conn was trying to forget about it. Forget about it. I mean, is this, uh, how do I say it? Mm -hmm. I say forget about it. Forget about it. <laughs> I love it. So yeah. uh, what prompted that? Was it also COVID and just being kind of- No, actually, um, I had gone to uh, Saudi Arabia with uh, Vince Corotola, who played Johnny Sachs, and Federico, who played Furio. And we went over with the cast, uh, some of the cast from Entourage, and William mm -hmm. Shatner, and all these, it, it was called Comic-Con. They have these huge Comic-Cons and the Prince wanted us over there. 
So they flew us to Saudi Arabia, and now when you land, uh, you would have to wear a mask mm -hmm. for COVID because yeah. you're female. Right. Women have to cover their faces. Yeah, it's so, Muslim. It's a Muslim country. You can't drink. Forget about smoking a, a joint. They'll, they'll cut your hands off. Forget about it. <laughs> right. So I'm over there, and, and uh, I'm with Kevin Dillon, who actually got me in the business. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was back in the club days and me and Kevin is 20 years later and we were laughing, we're in Saudi Arabia but we couldn't get a drink anyway mm -hmm. you know um, so what happened is Chuck contacted me and said to me, Chuck LaBella who also put me on The Apprentice he said to me, you want to do a podcast I said, where? and he said, Storic Media I said, yeah, I want to do a podcast so we put it together Mm. You know, we just knocked off 12 episodes. Nice. And we're going to do a special show. I'm going to have you on. You'd, oh, you'd be great. Yeah, I'd love to be on. Yeah. I'll bring you out as a surprise guest. Sounds great. Yeah. No, you'd be, you'd be good. We had a, um, what do you call it, a medium? Mm -hmm. This woman, she lives in Long Island. And she, she was freaking me out. She was telling <laughs> me things. I said, well, how do you know that? How do you know that? Yeah, those are, those are pretty, those well, are believe, some pretty amazing people. Do you believe in that stuff? You know, I, I, I don't not believe. I mean, I, I feel that if someone really has something that's, I feel like when someone tells you something that's good and like, well, that you judge to be good or that gives you, empowers you to, you know, be better on your own with, the information that they're giving you, then I think it's valuable. I think, you know, but when you go to someone and tell you that, you know, in 10 years, this one's going to die and blah, 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 blah. I, I, yeah. I don't, I'm not, I'm not a fan of anything like that, but if it's something that's really supporting and empowering another person and making someone feel really good and happy and better their lives, why not? Well, this particular lady, um, she was very good. Her name is Kim Russo. She gave me a lot of confidence and about uh, things that I've been thinking of doing. And I said, wow, how do you know about this? And how do you know about that? And how do you know about that? So it wasn't so much, I mean, she also said, your mother's trying to talk to you, you know, that stuff. Yeah, right. But sometimes we can discover you know that on our own. Was? You know, my answer was, why is she talking to you and not me? <laughs> That's great. There's a good response. And you know, I do believe- your mother. I said, well, can you, I, I want to talk to my mother. Well, see, to, to your point, Vin, so I just lost um, a lifelong friend that I met when I was on the road as a showgirl in 1985 uh, yesterday. And, um, you know, when I, when I knew he was getting down to the end uh, about 10 days ago, um, I, 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 I bawled. I was so upset. Um, I had taken the opportunity to go down and see him, um, this past Jeff, February. No, it was before COVID. So January before, like before we were exposed or we, we were before they expressed that th this virus even existed. So it was right before that time. It was like uh, somewhere around the beginning of January or something. And, uh, anyway, my point is. A um, couple of days ago, and we've all been in touch and you know, everyone in the business, you're, you're family forever. And we've all been in touch and you know, how's Dave, how's Dave? And um, so I had texted um, one, of, one of the guys and I said, um, he was uh, in, in Vegas. I said, did we learn any news because um, you know, I had a very lucid dream last night and uh, he came to visit me and we had this whole conversation, you know, in, in my bedroom. And um, he said, oh, he says, interesting. He says, well, he says, because that was, that was when he completely went comatose and was in a coma. And then he, and then he passed two days later. So I do believe that, you know, so I, to your point, why is she talking to, why is, why is your mother talking to her and not you? Well, that's a good question. <laughs>
when she's talking to you, you'll probably know when you have those lucid dreams, you know? Well, you know, we, we, we all, you, you and I, we grew up with, uh, certain, um, beliefs, mm -hmm. uh, that there are, there were signs, you know, um, that come to us, uh, and it means something. Uh, I know, um, um, you know, it could be a dream mm -hmm. and the dream could be a dream about something that's going to happen to you in the future. And then when it happens, you say, oh, I dreamt this. Yes. You know, so when people say to me, like, if you said to me, it's good to see you, Vinny, I, uh, I had a dream about you the other night and you're giving me this confidence um we we kind of make these dreams come true yeah we you we would, choose the creations that we wish to experience it's I almost say. like a relationship right mm -hmm. where you say oh i like this guy or girl and i want to see how far what could happen with us so you make that happen if you sit on your uh, and you, you sit home and you don't it's not going to happen right yeah, it's, it's you gotta true. Communicate. It's not going to happen. You have to communicate. So, yeah, and, right. and also to your point, so not just your career, but your relationships, your career, everything in your life, yeah. you know, the, it's up to, it's up to us to make it happen. And you have to take the advice of the people who know more than you know. hundred percent. It's like, if I'm directing, right? Like I, I work, we work every Monday night with our theater group. We're working on plays. And I give a note to an actor and I can tell they don't like that note. I, you want to say, well, do you want to direct? And I'll sit there and I'll be the role. See, if they, they have to take criticism and they have to let somebody guide the ship, the captain. Somebody has to be in control. Otherwise, it's chaos. So if I, especially with Zoom, if I had four actors up on Zoom right now, you and three other actors, and we're working on a piece and I'm looking at it, you know, I'm going to give you your notes after I do this thing. Okay, Lily, um, you got that little medallion hanging around your neck. Uh, where did you get it? And you're going to tell me where you got it. I'm going to say, well, why don't we use that in the scene and pretend that the character you're working with, the actor you're working with, who you never knew before in your whole life, gave it to you. And it's very important, this little pendant that you have around your neck because that person gave it to you. But he didn't really gave it, give it to you. Maybe the person you were talking about who passed away gave it to you. So whenever you touch it, you feel that that sorrow. Yeah, it's, it's like a mental recall. So yes. yeah. And that's how the way recall. we work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. that's how we work, you know? Yeah, absolutely. And, and very much so, like, you know, the um, Stanislavski but method or, you know, Stella stuff. Adler. But I'm curious, because I've always been curious about you, about, uh, I mean, we always wanted to talk, and I never got a chance to really talk to you on this level. Mm -hmm. How do you guide people if they're, especially during this COVID time, how do you guide people to get out of that funk, to get out of depression? I mean, when, when things were normal, I could see you doing it, you know, but how do you mm -hmm. do it now? It's so hard. Mm. Ah, so we're turning the interview around on me. <laughs> well, it's really simple, it, it, but for some people, it may not be easy. So that's, you know, a lot of what I always have been doing. And, and I even talk, I even teach this in my book is really, really, really learning how to navigate through a life situation um, so that you don't, you know, so that you don't go to pieces. And, and, and that could be with job loss. It could be with uh, a sudden death, uh, divorce, disaster, whatever. Right. Um, and that's really just bringing everyone into the, the, the reality or the knowing that we are so much more than a situation and we're so much more we have so much more power than we actually think and so when we don't give our power up to a situation you know any life situation like covid or like a death or like 
a job loss, um, like a ho your house going on fire, like you losing all the family photos, like whatever that might be, mm. you can you can stop and 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 come back to the re the the absoluteness uh, and knowing that I'm so much more than a situation. And, and then that is how we learn how to, when you learn that and you get that awareness and you really, really know that you know that you know that you know, then you can go beyond it. Um, you know, and, and hence beyond the current situation, that's the name of the podcast. And, you know, it's, it's funny because um, people, um, uh, we don't, we see ourselves on this, on a physical level and things that happen in, in this world in form, right? But however, um, I truly believe, uh, and, uh, and I know it to be true, whether, whether people believe this or not, does not make it untrue, <laughs> is that we really are multidimensional. We're, we're not this linear thinking mind and human that we think we are. We're, we're multidimensional. We're just touching the surface of, of how powerful we can really be. And when it comes to someone like yourself or myself that we're always making things happen, right? It's because we, we, we've tipped, we've touched more than the surface. We know how to do that. So imagine if we took it to the next level and the next level, and the next level after that. Uh, imagine, you know, what we can do. I mean, I believe that we really can start to go on living up to 200 years, you know, like they did back in, you know, thousands of uh, uh, years ago or centuries ago, back in uh, the Bible days where they used to live hundreds of years. I think that we, we're coming to that now, even, even science is coming to a lot of you know, discoveries and realizations. And they're also aligning, paralleling with spiritual teachings as well. So we're really at a really special place. And I know, you know, look, I don't like, I, I, I'd love for our listeners to really know that in this climate, this climate of COVID, it's, it's not the end. It's the beginning of a very, very, um, something really great to come if we're open to it, you know? Well, you kind of said the same thing almost that that lady said to me on my show. Mm -hmm. She said, from all of this, something great is going to come. If you choose to accept that. Yeah. If you Some people don't it, always. Yeah. yeah. If you say, oh, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't deal with this. I don't want to do this anymore. Yeah. I mean, we all, we all, we, we all have an opportunity to become enlightened so to speak. And being enlightened is, it just means that you really start to function on a higher vibration and you really start to get it. And that's what's, that's where it becomes so powerful. And that's where you can really be masterful at anything that you do and be, you know, very successful with everything. Um, you know, and, and like to your point earlier, like you have people that, you know, you say someone has to be the captain. You know, I've had, I've had a couple of authors that were really very inspiring for me and then I learned from um who inspired you the most inspired me to do what I I, I don't know to either be um persevere or inspired I, I, you to a career I, 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 I live many different lives yeah as I I'm do going, I'm going through what I call periods of transition yeah and, and uh it's almost like you know, uh, do I get tired of doing something? I want to do something else. No, I say, well, I kind of did that. Like what's happening to me now, Lily, is I'm beginning, I'm becoming a director and mm -hmm. thank it. Thank my theater company with Maureen Van Zandt and Warren and all this, well, everybody, you know, mm -hmm. that they're letting me cast and direct plays. We're doing them on zoom and and I'm, a, I, you know, I said to the cast last night, I really, really, the way I looked forward to this podcast tonight with you, because I've been in such a long time, mm -hmm. I look forward to my sessions and I, I, and I pile them on. I'm yeah. directing three different plays as we talk. 
because I want to give my actors that came to my class and they can't study right now. I want to give them something to keep going. At the same time, I'm learning. Yeah, yeah. And it, it, I love it. And I'm actually going to, I was going to ask you about that because I know that you were teaching at, I guess, HB Studios and then all of a sudden, boom, that's, that's gone, right? Yeah, it's all And so gone. now yeah. look, you, you know, you found another opportunity. You had to pivot. Yeah. Right. How right. can I get all the kids together and how can we keep, you right. know, working? Well, uh, actually, Maureen and Stevie uh, Van Zandt. They're we great. Did, they, yeah, they, they started this. And I said, Stevie, I can't do this. I can't. I was full. I can't act out of computer. He says, you better get used to it. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, even beyond that, with the band, uh, uh, um, Jeffrey um, Whiting, our producer from Bullets Over Broadway, got in touch with me and uh, he said, Vinny, um, do you still have your band? I said, yeah, why? He says, I want to get some music going. We went down to Broadway in August. There was nobody there. It was like a horror movie. I heard the city's not the same since I left. I it was know. totally empty. We went upstairs and we performed to 50 people in the audience, but we Zoomed and we had an audience of about 2,000 people watching our show because of this, this new media that we're talking about. So you got to adapt, Lily. You have to adapt. I've been, I, honestly, I, I, if, look, this is another one of those things that, you know, I, I talk about is like we, First of all, we have to have gratitude no matter what, right? And we've all had loss and, you know, whether it was people, you know, lost from COVID or, or complications related to it, or even things completely unrelated to it. But the point is, we, we, we do have to really realize or have gratitude for technology today. If we didn't have the technology we had today, I couldn't talk to my my dear friend, Trevor Lorkins, who lives across the pond, him and his wife in England, right? You wouldn't be able to, you know, we wouldn't be able to be doing this and connecting right. to all of these people, right? right. It, and so it's, so it's, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know? Um, and um, I actually, you know, I was going to ask you, you know, I love all of, you know, you're always working on projects and, you know, to your point, one project goes into the next and the next because you're you're staying involved, right? And and even though you said, Oh, I can't do this, look, you're doing it and you're yeah. learning as you go. And, yeah. and that's yeah. life. Yeah. And then when you learn how to do it, you can pass it on. You can pass it on. And that's why I love teaching um uh that at the school, uh these guys come in. And they take one class and then all of a sudden, and because we do a four week workshop, then all of a sudden the next one, same people and the next one, all of a sudden like, you know, like Killer Joe, we took seven workshops. Uh, now uh, um, this kid, uh, Derek, seven workshops, Alicia, seven, all of a sudden you say, you know, you graduated. I, I can't teach you nothing no more. Go, go, <laughs> go find a job. <laughs> Go audition. <laughs> I yeah, love it. go go get a job. And go they, do something. You've got a skill set wanna, now. They 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 feel, and these are the kids that I'm working on as we direct these plays. They feel like um, that I'm like their uncle now or something. I don't know what the proper way to say it, Lily. Mm. Like, they depend mm. on me, and uh. and when I say. When I get cranky, and you know I get cranky, when I get cranky, and I don't feel like working today, or I don't feel like doing this, or I don't feel like going, and I, I, I disappoint them, because mm -hmm. they really look forward to this, mm -hmm. you know, to working. Don't uh, you feel that they lift you up too, even like on the day that you don't feel don't. like doing it? Yeah, because yeah, I walk away, uh, like I walk away satisfaction after I do stuff like this, like I'm right, I know, you know, I'm going to want to watch this podcast after it's done. I can, one of the great things about a podcast, it's, it's locked in. You, you don't throw it away. I could watch it two weeks from now. Yeah. Sit. This is going to go into audio on the podcast and yeah. it's, and my podcast is everywhere. 
you know, tune in Apple, it's everywhere. So you could tune that in, share it with, you know, with all yeah. your people. Um, yeah, definitely. Now, uh, but, but, but what I'm, the point I'm trying to get is, um, I feel that they depend on me and I can't disappoint them. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. um, like, uh, I was putting a play together and the kid that was doing the lead, he wasn't stepping up, you know, he was busy doing his date thing. And I said, um, you either want to do this or you don't want to do it. But you're taking off because you got a date thing and it's interfering with rehearsals. He really didn't want to do it. And I had to let him go. And then uh, a couple of weeks ago, we had an event out here with Kathy Narducci. You know Catherine. She showed her art. She's an artist now, as well as okay. an actor. And we had a whole display of our art. <clears throat> and Chaz Palmateri showed up with his wife, and Chaz bought one, and everybody showed up. And I saw the kid, and I felt guilty because I had released him to say the nice word mm -hmm. this play he was doing. You know, I didn't mm -hmm. fire him; I just listened. You know, and and we talked a little. And then the other day, I was worried, and I said, "How's this kid doing?" And I sent him a text: "How you doing?" He said, "How you doing?" And we text back and forth. And he admitted to me on that text, I wasn't up for doing that play. I'm sorry I disappointed you. He says, I had to make money, man. You know, we're not making any money. I had to grab every job I can grab because he cuts hair. And I said, I understand. So we have to make these choices. I mean, we want, we all want to be artists, but if they're not paying the bills. Then you've got to step in. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I, 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 I love my friends. And when I lose them, I lost Anthony Rubicello. You met Anthony. I lost Nikki Gadero. I lost John Gallagher. All within this time period. I know. It was such a tough time. And then when I look at some of the guys that are hurting, because they're not making any money, because there's no work. There's yeah. no acting. There's nothing. I say to them, uh, you got to start having a philosophy like my mother and father had. You got to go out and do whatever you got to do, you know, to pay the bills. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, Vinny, adults are casting. To work. So what I do with these guys, this one guy in particular, I says, why don't you work for me? You know, when you're home all the time, you know, mm -hmm. you're in your house. Mm -hmm. You got to do this. You got to do that. There's nobody coming over to help you. Right. And if you don't do it, because you're just, you're like me. We're both neat freaks. If you don't do it, yeah. you look at it. You say, it's got to get done. Yeah. It's one o'clock in the morning. So I said to the guy, look, why don't you come work for me? And he says, can you handle? I said, yeah, I'm going to put you on payroll. If I came, when I go fishing, this particular guy, he drives me to go fishing. I bought him a pole. Does he? Did he catch it? I said, he keeps saying to me, let's go see Lily because we're looking across the bay. Yeah. Well, we're at Robert Moses. This guy, yeah. I said, I'm going to bother her today. But one day, I'll pull up with this guy. He turned out to be like the other day. Um, I wasn't picking up the phone because I was on a computer doing something. Yeah, you were working. And he comes in the house and he looks at me because I gave him a key and he said, are you okay? He said, yeah, I'm working. He said, I thought you were dead. I said, wow. <laughs> but I'm glad I got people like that in my life. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's just, you are, you're great. You're supportive. In fact, thank you for supporting me today on my podcast. Tell me how can I support you? What are you working on? Or like, how would you like listeners, uh, our listeners to what would you like them to know about what you're working on or where they can, you know, well, they go uh, to your website or if they can the go podcast to uh, is out there. It's on Stork. We got all these episodes out. You can go to YouTube and forget about it. Um, that's out. Me and Gumbai Johnny, we had some great guests on. We're going to do season two in March. We'll have Lily on uh, as a guest. Um, 
you know, but um, what's going on? I got on sign on my door, Lily. You for all local people, for our local New York listeners, yeah, be a, um, a fundraiser that uh, Vin will be doing with the Gangster Squad at the Wonder, Wonder Bar. Bar, December twenty sixth. Okay. Yeah, and you would love it. It's from uh, it's from um, animals. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 It's, see what happened. Is Debbie who runs the Wonder Bar, Debbie Delisa, and she started to say to me, "Do you want to get involved with this um, uh, organization I have? It's called Vets for Pets. I call it Vets for Pets. It's pets for veterans. Pets oh, I love that. That's for great. Veterans, especially veterans that are older now, Vietnam veterans. They need a dog. They need a cat. Both yeah. Dogs. Where and is the Wonder it. Bar? Yeah, we do it. So." I, she said, they're going to be great because, you, you know, you, you name Big Pussy. So we said, okay, let's <laughs> call the band Big Pussy's Gangster Squad. That's for pets. Oh. And with that, we sell out. We do the shows. It's a lot of fun. Oh, know? good. Okay. So I, anyone I that's listening. Then nobody's really making any money. We're trying to make as much as money. And when I did that concert in New York, uh, I said, um, uh, Jeffrey Whiting said to me, um, we need to have a charity. I said, yeah, I want to, I want to raise money for Nick Cadero for his wife, for Amanda. When you find things like that, you know, you don't care if you're going to make any money from the club owners. It's, it's, it's a, it's a charity. No, absolutely. We, we, part of what we're it's here to do is to give back. I mean, it's... sometimes, and sometimes Bruce Springsteen walks in. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've been doing light a day for almost 20 years down in Asbury Park. And Bruce put that together with Bobby Benjamin, and it's for Parkinson's, and it got huge. But you can't do it this year. Yeah, but that's I, a, I love when it. When you do these charities, you walk away saying, "Okay, I did something today." Absolutely, I and you know what? I'm I, very I, happy. That's why I love you, Vinny. It's all about giving back, and so yeah. So to that end. To that end, let's just put that out there as our last message for this episode is uh, about giving back and smiling no matter what and, yeah. uh, and, 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 and just moving beyond, moving forward. Thank you, Vinny, for joining well, me. Uh, stay I on go, after I stop the live. We can still chat. But before we close, what would you like to say? I want to say you don't know in life what's around the corner. And until you walk down that block and make that left or right turn, you don't, you don't know what's there. And you have to keep moving on because that's the journey. You asked me earlier what happened after Sopranos. I said, well, I went to Hollywood. I, I kept working. And what's happening now with me? Well, I can't go to L.A. I can't. So I'm working like you from the home. And I'm happy. You know, I, I get I'm alone a lot, but I'm happy. I'm adjusting. And I know. And I'm going to say this to all of your fans, that at the end of this tunnel, there's a big, bright, shining star. Yes, you heard it here from Mr. Vincent Pastori. And her Thank name is so Lily. Thank, uh, there you go. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vinny. And okay. if you have enjoyed this podcast, please share it. Give it five stars and uh, subscribe to me on Beyond the Current Situation. Thanks for joining, Vinny.